A storm system pushing through much of the country, bringing drier air behind it. But after that, all eyes turn to the tropics as something tries to develop off the southeast coastline by this weekend. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this Tuesday, July 1st. And welcome to at the halfway mark of 2025. And uh, it's been a pretty crazy first half, I would say. We've had snow down on the Gulf Coast. Back this winter, we've had crazy tornado outbreaks. Unfortunately, the next step in that puzzle of this year is probably going to be the tropics, and we could get a go out of here by the time we get towards this coming weekend. We'll be breaking that down for you and how that could impact your 4th of July plans. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead, like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications so you're up to date with the latest data uh, as it continues to roll on in. Also, go ahead, follow me on social media, Facebook and X slash Twitter. Uh, you can follow me there where I will also be posting updates, as I always do for you folks, about uh, what may be changing in the models and how, again, that could affect your forecast, as well as other just fun little tidbits about my life uh, that uh, I often post as well. So uh, definitely go ahead and check that out. All right, folks, well, let's just go and dive right on into it today uh, because we do have multiple things to talk about, starting with this frontal system crossing the lower 48. And yeah, not hard to find on this Tuesday morning. Here it is. This is that dividing line between uh, a lot of Gulf and Atlantic moisture in front of it and then nice and drier air behind it, especially in the mid-level. So I think a lot of us still going to be pretty humid at the surface, although better than it has been. Uh, but more importantly, up above our head, that's where there's going to be a pretty good amount of dry air that will help to cut off thunderstorm activity just in time for the 4th of July for most of us. Now, the key word there is most of us. There's a couple pockets of the country that might not get quite as lucky. I'll tell you who that is uh, coming up in just a minute. But that's the storm system. There it is crossing through. And that will be bringing active weather today for many of us. In fact, already seeing that here on our radar sites uh, we can see already plenty of rain falling here through much of Ohio. We've got uh, areas here with flood watches into the DMV, up through Philadelphia, Harrisburg, and much of New Jersey, back towards Harrisonburg, Virginia. So heavy rain going to be on the way with that. We've got showers into New England as we're uh, looking at this here uh, late this morning and early into the afternoon, and heavy rain just off the Florida coast uh, as well that we're going to need to monitor as well. So we've got pockets of active weather already ongoing out there. Uh, all of this, again, going to lead to a pretty active day today and tomorrow. And yeah, you can already see that area we're watching in the tropics. That'll be coming up here later on in the video. But first, let's take a look at some upper level maps. Let's talk about this front uh, and that severe weather threat as I punch my microphone. I'm just that excited about today's video. Uh, so let's go ahead and switch on over now and take a look at that. The upper level map painting today's picture quite well out there. Uh, a couple different areas that are going to lead to some active weather today. Now, the big area is this trough we've been talking about, kind of dip down into the east. That's what's helping to create this surface front that's pushing on through and bringing those increased rain chances today, as well as increased storm chances. Now, another area to watch for severe weather uh, today is going to be back in here and uh, a little bit of a leftover boundary slash some northwest flow slash a little bit of lift from this incoming trough from California. A lot of different pieces out there kind of working together, but uh, the biggest area by far today will be into the east. Now, let's time it out for you uh, through the next couple of days. That's today. Let's take a look at tomorrow, Wednesday, that front now crossing through the east. You can see uh, what's uh, kind of, uh, you know, not super well defined, but well enough to find a note that it's their trough into the east. Then another trough, kind of a really small, compact one to the north up into Canada by our Wednesday going into Thursday. By Thursday going into Friday, we get another piece of energy to shoot into the northeast, specifically New England. That could lead to another day of maybe storms for your Thursday. And then hopefully, I think, clearing out by Friday just in time for the 4th as we take a look there at uh, that piece. Now, as that's happening, a new ridge building in behind it, that's going to increase the heat, the humidity, and it's going to start to feel like summer again in a big way as we go into the 4th of July under that new heat dome. But that combined with the new kind of trough out west could lead to more storm activity kind of in between here from the Rockies into the northern plains. We'll need to watch that. That's one area that could unfortunately have a bit more of a uh, tough forecast there for the 4th of July for any firework plans or outdoor plans. But generally speaking, the majority of us looking quite well for the 4th. Now, before we get there, though, we're going to have to deal with a little bit of severe weather today included. We've got a slight risk up. That's a level two out of five here in yellow from D.C., up to Baltimore, Philly, New York City included in that, all the way back down towards uh, the northern suburbs of Richmond and even towards Roanoke, Virginia there, uh, seeing that potential. But uh, I'll caution you, anyone shaded into the dark green today could see strong gusty winds. 
just the highest threat of that there in yellow. And then back out west, again, a little area here in South Dakota and Nebraska. Strong winds, large hail, and maybe even a tornado or two going to be possible out that way. But really, strong wind and hail would be the main things to watch out for. Uh, so that's what we're seeing here uh, for today. As we take a look at tomorrow's forecast, uh, yeah, we start to simmer down a little bit. However, a couple marginal risks to look at. And if you look at the tornado threat tomorrow... Nothing, luckily, just like we like to see it. The wind threat, though, you can see, could see, excuse me, some storms with uh, strong winds up into the Midwest and Great Lakes, and then back into the Northern Rockies as well for your Wednesday. And taking a look at Thursday here, you have two more areas to watch the Northeast, a little bit more intriguing. Again, that powerful upper level piece of energy swinging on through right before the fourth. Uh, this could lead to a bit more of an all hazards type outlook here in the green there. We'll uh, monitor it and uh, see how it trends, but definitely. Uh, looking like could be another day of severe weather for you folks in the Northeast, one today, and then again on Thursday before finally clearing out just in time for that holiday weekend. All right, let's switch on over now. Let's take a look at some mesoscale data, time it out for you, and give you the latest look. All right, here's the latest high resolution rapid refresh model. Let's time it out for you. Yeah, here's today. You can see that pocket of showers and storms really anywhere into the east today, especially east of the Appalachia chain by the time. Uh, we get through this evening, but uh, again, this is this afternoon time frame. Plenty of scattered showers and storms. Some pockets of strong winds, again, embedded in these storms. Heavy rain and lightning will be the main threats that we watch for. Now, here we go by this evening. This is around rush hour. Yeah, the Appalachia chain getting it good. The I-95 corridor from D.C. northbound all the way up to Boston could see some pretty good rain. Uh, again, I don't think everybody gets a storm, but some of us will. And even a smaller fraction of us will get a pretty good one. Uh, with gusty winds, again, the lightning, and even some pockets of localized flooding, especially up here in the Northeast where you got some concrete jungles combined with a little bit of training going on, uh, could see a little bit of a flooding threat. So watching out for that uh, as well. Uh, now keep it going into the overnight. This crosses through the Charlotte Metro by late this evening, uh, up into portions of Virginia, again into the Delmarva, eventually overnight into the Midlands of South Carolina. Now the further south you go, the more broken up this line is going to be. So pretty widespread rain of Virginia northbound up into Boston, uh, a little more scattered into North Carolina, South Carolina, and especially Georgia and Alabama, even more scattered than the Carolinas are going to see. Again, the further south you go, just the less lift this front has. And uh, also the mountain's going to kind of squeeze out some of that uh, energy as well. Uh, so that's overnight tonight. Waking up tomorrow morning on your Wednesday, still some scattered showers. The front kind of slows down, gets caught up a little bit uh, there. You can see uh, still here into the east by the afternoon, another round of showers and storms. I think the Outer Banks of North Carolina, all the way down to Wilmington, the Grand Strand, maybe even into Charleston. Uh, the sea breeze combined with what's left of this could definitely lead to some showers and storms. Could even get a couple leftover storms off the mountains uh, that, again, could lead to a little bit of rain. Nothing jumping out uh, as crazy, though. But, again, same thing. Some gusty winds. Um, a lot of lightning and uh, heavy rain going to be the concern there for your Wednesday. But notice more of us dry Wednesday than uh, today, which is good. And that gets us all the way into Thursday morning. By that point, the majority of this front is now offshore. Although that next piece of energy swinging through could lead to, again, more showers and storms into the northeast on Thursday. But luckily, again, for the 4th of July, I think most of us here east of the Mississippi looking good outside of maybe the Sunshine State, as ironic as that is, because what's going to happen is, again, this front, it's going to get stalled. Here you go. You can see this uh, still big area of showers and storms. And Florida's just sticking out a little bit too much here. You're still going to get stuck in it. So we'll need to watch for that. It's also what we need to watch for potential tropical development. That's a great segment. Let's go ahead now and break down that 4th of July a little bit more and then talk about the tropics. Now, the good news behind this front, uh, we're getting a pretty good push of dry air for a lot of us, uh, partially at the surface and above our heads. Now, here's the surface dew point forecast. Uh, again, this is like the muggy meter. So the more purplish, greenish colors you see, the more muggy it is outside or the more humid, as people say. Uh, the drier colors, the brownish and the lighter greens, uh, that's the drier the air is going to feel. So this is today. Notice it downright muggy and gross for most of us out there uh, here in the eastern part of the country. As we go further ahead into time, though, here's Wednesday afternoon, still holding on to muggy weather here into the southeast and uh, even portions of coastal uh, northeast here and along the Gulf Coast. Then by Thursday, yeah, we start to get some nicer air pushing in. Uh, you see even Charlotte getting down into the low 60s for dew points, Nashville, the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, not going to feel great per se, but a lot better than it has. And we'll take any relief we can get. Same thing, especially for the interior Northeast, looking pretty good there. Uh, and then we'll keep it going. Here is your Friday, 4th of July. 
And uh, we start to creep the dew points back up, especially in the plains. Again, that new ridge building in back there. We're going to get more moisture return. But check out the northeast. You get the one-two punch. You get uh, today and tomorrow's front. Then you get the Thursday front. By that time, uh, we get to the fourth. We get two points down in the 40s and 50s. That's more fall-like air than anything for a lot of us, especially the further inland you go. Now, along the beaches, obviously still going to be a little more muggy, but um, yeah, that's that's downright nice for your 4th of July. Uh, not to say that you'll need, you know, a sweater and um, t-shirt or a sweater and long sleeve shirt or anything, but um, uh, yeah, that's about as good as you could ask for this time of year. Still not bad elsewhere, except for the Great Plains where you could see, again, that big plume of moisture creeping back in. Uh, now, that's part of the story. The other story is precipitable water or how much moisture do we have in the atmosphere that can get wrung out as rain. This is important for the rainfall forecast today. Yeah, you can see why we're going to get heavy downpours in the east. Yeah, we got a lot of moisture from Florida all the way up to Maine. The atmosphere is loaded just waiting for this front to swing on through and squeeze every uh, ounce of water it can out of it. The good news, after it passes... Yeah, we start to clear things out, and here's by uh, Thursday, the day before the 4th. Again, most of us, a lot drier air, especially up into the interior northeast after uh, that Thursday front swings on through. And by uh, Friday, again, the 4th of July, east of the Mississippi, pretty good outside of Florida, and then outside of maybe some higher end rain chances up here into portions of the Midwest. Not, you know, insane. Don't see a washout there. Now, where we could be dealing with more of a washout is back into here. Uh, the front range of Colorado back up into the northern plains, a lot of precipitable water. And remember, we've got a trough dipping down here at the same time. Uh, so you're going to get lift above moisture. Unfortunately, that's a recipe for a pretty rainy look. And you can see that here on our latest European model. This is Friday, July 4th. And uh, again, the two trouble spots we've been talking about, Florida. Uh, doesn't look like a washout per se in Florida, but uh, some folks going to get a lot of rain, I think, out of this scenario uh, and then back up into the northern plains. So those are the two areas that look the most troublesome to me for that 4th of July firework forecast, at least as of Tuesday at, uh, you know, about uh, 1030, 11 o'clock in the morning, East Coast time. Uh, so take it with a grain of salt. Things will change a little bit. But generally, those are the areas I'm the most concerned about potential firework interruptions in the forecast. Places I think will be pretty good. Uh, yeah, right into here. That's where it's looking nice. And uh, that's good because we've had some forths uh, where, you know, maybe not so much. Now, the other piece of this is that front that's left over. I told you that could lead to tropical trouble. Yeah, here we go. This is what it's going to look like on the vorticity map by uh, the 4th of July. Uh, we've got this big upper level piece of energy and behind it, this ribbon of vorticity sneaking down to the south. What often happens is little pieces of energy break off of that uh, very thin line. It doesn't take much to pinch it off. And that over warm ocean temperatures, and if we've got a lack of shear and dry air, that could lead to tropical development, which means it's that time. Let's go ahead and take a look at the tropical segment of today's video. The potential for tropical development has bumped up just slightly since we last talked. We were looking at 20% uh, yesterday, now 30%. Now, notice a good thing here. The day two percentage, zero. We're not getting anything uh, before the 4th of July. It's going to be the fourth and after that we need to watch. And again, that area to watch is anywhere from just offshore of the Big Bend all the way down to Fort Myers and to the Gulf side of Florida to the Atlantic side of the state, offshore from Wilmington, Charleston, Myrtle Beach, Savannah, Jacksonville, all the way back down to West Palm Beach. Uh, yeah, this could technically form on either side. Now, I'll tell you the trend in the models has been for this to be more of an Atlantic type event than maybe a Gulf event. But does not mean that's exactly how this is going to evolve. Again, we've got a couple days to watch it. Uh, that low pressure could break off and form anywhere within this circle, so we'll continue to monitor it. The good news, it's a big complex of storms you see right now. That's not the storm. That's nothing to do with it. That's just some good old-fashioned uh, gulf uh, convection going on. So, um, you know, we've got we've got some time to moderate, uh, monitor it. Um, now, let's take a look at some old reliable ensembles here. We'll start with the European and again, I said the trend was for this to be more of an Atlantic system. And yeah, the European ensembles indicating more so that if this does develop, and if being a key word here, it could be just offshore of the Carolinas, Georgia, and Florida, kind of in that bubble there along the Gulf Stream. That's another component of the forecast, along the Gulf Stream. This thing could be cooking with gas uh, if it does try to get going. In fact, some of these ensemble members try to get a good little storm forming here. The other question is, where does it go if it does form? Uh, and right now, most of the models that do form this pull it back north into the Carolinas or Georgia or maybe up the eastern seaboard a little bit. Now, uh, just thinking about probabilities here, there's a lot of ifs here. The first if is, does it even form? The second if, 
is if it does form, how strong is it going to be? Is it going to be strong enough that we see impacts out of it or just some rainfall? So uh, you start adding a bunch of coin flips and more and more coin flips, the probabilities of this being a big high impact system start to become pretty low. So that's the good news. However, whether it forms or not, wherever it does go, I think it's a pretty heavy rain. And I've talked about this for the Carolinas on uh, TV the other night. Uh, if it does move inland, it will increase rain chances. And uh, I think either way, the energy looks to be moving back that way. So that's something to keep an eye on. Now, as for forming, again, the European ensembles have some action ongoing. The GFS ensembles also have some action ongoing. Not as much, though. Normally, things are flipped. Normally, the European squad and the GFS is getting all excited. Uh, this time, kind of uh, the opposite a little bit. But uh, still, going to monitor it, watch it, and see if anything forms out of it. One thing I will say is, uh, like I mentioned, the Atlantic is pretty warm out here. We've got um, sea surface temperatures around 29 degrees Celsius. Uh, that's quite warm. That's more than warm enough for tropical development. The other questions would be wind shear and dry air. It could be a little bit of that around, um, but uh, sea surface temperatures off the charts looking uh, plenty warm enough here uh, off the southeast coastline for tropical development. Now, let's take a look at some models and uh, try to time this out for you. Uh, here we go. This is the GFS, and uh, we'll kind of see what it does. And uh, here we go. So this is the latest run of the GFS. This is by, again, the time above my head. Uh, here we go. This is Friday the 4th. You can see here's that front stalled out. Uh, here's that big plume of moisture associated with it, even reaching down into Florida. And notice how you start to get a little bit of troughing along that. That tells me low pressure is trying to break off here off the southeast coastline on the GFS model. Um, doesn't quite do much with it, but again, you see how you get these little closed off areas of low pressure, indicates the energy is around, just a lot to figure out on where it would break off and how strong it would get. Like, I don't, it would take a lot for this to become a hurricane. However, could we get tropical storm with our sea name, uh, Chantal? It's possible. It definitely is. And the GFS showing that moisture either way, hanging around and trying to lurk back up into the southeast. You can see trying to form here another area of low pressure by next Monday. So a lot of different uh, pieces of energy competing for the main job here. Will one of them take it? Only time will tell, uh, but it is a possibility. What about the European model or um, other reliable model? Uh, you can see here, same idea. We've got that rain just off the southeast coastline, spinning away, trying to become something. Here we go by Sunday. Again, tries to close off an isobar here. Doesn't quite get it done, but you get the idea. Broad low pressure kind of hanging around the coastline, likely going to increase rainfall chances for many. And uh, again, tries to work back inland by the time we get about a week or so from now. Now, one more model I'll show you. This is the Icon German model. This one a little bit more aggressive with the storm. And uh, you can see what I mean. This is starting the 4th. Same general idea, but spins it up a little bit sooner. And we've got a much more defined area of low pressure. This would be by Saturday night into Sunday of the 4th of July weekend, moving inland into Georgia, Florida, and South Carolina on this model. Uh, you can see they're kind of working in and bringing a plume of moisture with it. Now, if that's the most aggressive model we have right now, we're looking pretty good. But again, we'll watch the rainfall threat. Uh, we know it does not take a named system to cause big troubles. Uh, folks in Wilmington will tell you about the no-name storm from last year. Uh, absolute chaos out of that one. Uh, again, not comparing this to that, not saying it'll be like that, but just meaning we do need to keep an eye on it and continue to monitor the situation. All right, folks. Well, that's all I got for you on this Tuesday. Again, reminder, if you missed it yesterday, I'm out of town. <laughs> I know it's a terrible time with the tropics trying to heat up, but I'm out of town tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. I'll be back Saturday morning. Uh, which uh, by then we'll probably know what this thing is going to do. So apologize about that, but it's been a planned trip for a while and uh, I can't uh, change that. So uh, is what it is. Now I do recommend and go ahead and watch Mitch West Weather. If you're watching me already, I'm sure you know about Mitch's channel. Check him out. He'll have very in-depth stuff, even more than I do about this uh, setup, where things could go and what the impact could mean for, uh, for you, wherever you may be watching from. All right, y'all have a great one. Stay safe and I'll see you all next time.